Hello and welcome to the um, second video of my Minecraft RAM tutorials. Um, in my first video, I showed you how to build single read RAM, so the standard RAM design in Minecraft. And in this video, I will be progressing on to the dual read RAM, which is more complex, um, but really not that hard. Uh, and if you've already watched and understood single read RAM, dual read will be extremely easy. So to begin with, I'll just go over the colour code again. Um, red is where the data in is, so uh, the data input. So your numbers from probably your ALU, uh, so your ALU output go into there. Um, yellow is write, or saving to memory. Um, Grey is signal transportation, uh, which I'll get onto more when I uh, describe it. Um, explain it, sorry, describe it. <laughs> anyway, um, green is read one, so the first read. Um, blue is read 2, so the second read. So two reads make it dual read RAM, hence the name. Um, as you can see, this got no blue because it's only a single read. And the magenta block is the transistor, which is the, just the block pushed by the pistons. Um, so the dimensions of this RAM are 2, 2 wide, um, 4 long, and 16 high. So 2 by 4 by 16. Um, <laughs> Um, a guy named Guy123456789, zero, um, he created dual read RAM, which is 2 by 3 by 13 which is just insanely tiny. But, um, but yeah, this is my design, this is my uh, first dual read RAM design, so it's not bad, it's reasonably quick. Um, okay, so I'll uh, describe how this works. Explain, not describe. <sighs> anyway, um, so let's just input some data. As you can see, they're inverted, but it's just the way this is designed. So that is one, two, four. So that's five. Um, I'll just do five. I think I did five last time. Um, so these um, these pistons from the bud, the block update update detector, um, which is um, how the RAM can uh, remember its memory. So at the moment, the, um, this is now off, and this is now off, so uh, the bud is not being powered anymore. So if we update it um, by powering this redstone, um, this will now retract, and this one will now retract, but the rest, since it's still powered by up here, uh, the rest will now uh, still stay extended. So now uh, these two have been um, retracted. Um, when they're retracted, this allows the signal from this block here. Um, this torch doesn't affect these pistons at all, so, but this um, this torch powers the redstone. And now this is retracted. This air can travel down. It unpowers this torch, which now unpowers this piston, which is there. This is where the first read is. So um, with this piston here, uh, sorry, this one, it is powered in two places. It's powered by this torch, and it's powered by this line. However, with um, uh, with this piston, it's only powered in one place, as this torch doesn't power it anymore. And the only place it's powered is this green read line. So now if we unpower the read line, and thus unpowering this piston, this piston will retract. This will still be extended, as it's... Um, still being powered, this one will retract and the rest will all still be extended. And you will get uh, the output as reading 5, which is what is stored up in here in the bud. So that there is would be your single read RAM. That's just the one read. And now we can uh, just unread that. But the clever thing about dual read RAM is you can read from two different addresses at the same time by reading one address on read 1 and a different address on read 2. So I'll, uh, I'll just write something else to remember. Right, I did 5 in that one so I'll do 10 in the next. And 10 is um, 8 and 2. So this one and this one. I'll save this to address number 2. I think that has worked. 8 and 2. Okay. So now as you can see, if I just read the first address, 5 has been output, and read the second address, 10 has been output. 
Um, but um, so now we uh, go on to the second read. Uh, the way this works is uh, I'll use this cell as a demonstration. Um, the power is not being uh, is now being sent down here, turning off this torch. Uh, I've already explained which uh, turns off this piece of redstone, allowing this torch to be powered, um, making this unpowered. Uh, no, making this powered. Sorry, making a torch unpowered, uh, making this this up here, uh, this piece of redstone unpowered. Um, I just need to travel down, and I can't get out there. Um, that piece of redstone is would uh, that piece of redstone? Where is it? This cell here. That piece of redstone, as you can see, is on top of this piston. So it's, it works in the same way as a. Uh, as read one, so now um, now this piston isn't being powered here, and uh, you you want to use glowstone here so um, it doesn't cause a bud. So that glowstone just stops this from updating this. Um, well, making it extend. But yeah, um, so this isn't powering the piston anymore, but the piston is still receiving power from this blue this blue line here, as you can see. Um, this redstone is going into it. But now, if we unpower, um, as you can see, this piston here is now not receiving power from here, and it's not receiving power from the line there. So, um, but whereas this piston here, for example, is still receiving power from up here, um, so it's still extended. So, ten is being read, and. Um, just so that I can demonstrate, you can read two different addresses at once. Read one, read address one on the first read, read address two on the second read. Two different numbers are being outputted. And this is extremely clever because, um, well, useful and clever. Um, because we can then use these two numbers. This would like be our registers in the uh, in our ALU, uh, in, not in our ALU, in our CPU. These two numbers then would go into the uh, into the ALU. And then they would be computed, say added or subtracted or anded, XR, whatever, whatever function you want to do. They will then be um, said so the area would be here. The bid um, and answer would be computed. And then to go over the top, bust back into the input, and then this could be saved to a different address. So say uh, say we wanted to add these two numbers, uh, five and ten is fifteen, um, which is eight. Four, two, and one. So now eight, four, two, and one, and we could save that um, into address three, like this. So now, uh, so that would be our ALU register loop, and that would make up our CPU um, along with the program memory. So, uh, say so that that is uh, the the most advanced way of making a CPU now. Well. Um, some people are trying to do pipelining. If you don't know what that is, uh, don't worry. But yeah, <laughs> it's crazily complicated. But yeah, um, so that's how the dual read RAM works. There's not really uh, much more to say about it. That will uh, that's pretty much concluding all my uh, RAM tutorials. I'm not going to do any more. Um, that should have given you enough uh, enough information. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.